All right, all you fitness-minded, athletic-minded, buffed people, sodium is your friend. It's probably one of the most overlooked ergogenic aids. It will improve performance, strength, and pumps. It even can improve cognitive function. I know they say sodium is bad for you, but they're wrong. Unless your doctor specifically tells you to lower your sodium intake, studies do show that higher sodium intakes probably offer health benefits, especially if you exercise. That's right. Salt that steak, mother... What? <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> Whoa. Aggressive. Yeah. That went hard. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, it's funny. You look at the... the so uh, let me cover first why there are studies that show that sodium can be connected to uh, poor health outcomes. These studies don't control for processed food consumption. So have, processed foods all are very high sodium. Anytime you buy something boxed or in a wrapper, one of the ingredients that improves palatability and shelf life is sodium. So, and you would be surprised how high a sodium processed foods are. Yeah. So when they look at data and they say, oh, the people who consume the most sodium have the worst health, what they're actually looking at are people who consume a lot of heavily processed foods, thus eating a lot of calories, a lot of other things that aren't healthy. And then people who eat heavily processed foods, a lot of them also probably don't exercise and all that stuff. But when you parse all that out and control for it, what you find is that higher sodium intakes uh, seem to be better for a lot of different things, especially for athletic performance. So it's not a bad thing. In fact, it's one of the things, if you eat a whole food diet and you exercise properly, you probably should make sure that you are aware of adding sodium to your diet, either in the form of electrolyte powders or adding lots of salt uh, to your food. You'll actually see a performance improvement for most people. Yeah, if you eat ultra processed food, it's it's going to be a rapid increase to where your RDA is, you're going to hit your and exceed your RDA for salt, like almost like after one, one meal, one meal, yeah. one meal that you do. So I, I understand like that's sort of the general public. Um, and, and so it's like, you kind of have to kind of cater towards that audience of like, look, but in terms of like people that don't tend to lean towards those ultra processed foods very often, like salt's a very vital uh, mineral for you to, to include in your diet. 100%. Yeah. But the conversations lean so heavily in that direction that health and fitness people don't even realize that they're, cause you would think like, Oh, I'm, I'm salting my food. So I'm okay. But that from going from somebody who was, let's say not following any sort of a diet, eating the standard American diet, which is heavily processed, you take tons and tons of sodium. Then all of a sudden you decide, Oh, I'm gonna get on my health kick. I'm gonna start eating nothing but whole foods and I'm going to enjoy it and salt it. The, the, dramatic difference between you're that still low, you yeah, lowered your now you're low yeah and so i and i don't think that's communicated enough it wasn't even to me like i didn't ever really pay in fact if you eat nothing but whole foods i don't even know if you could over salt your food no you it'd it, be you, difficult for you, sure. it would be really difficult the amount that you would have to pour the amount of uh, like table salt that you would have to or himalayan pink salt whatever salt you're using that you would have to put on your your steak and potatoes and and wh whatever you eat rice whatever you're eating, it, it would be it would like be disgusting it for it to even catch up to what is naturally put in these processed foods, wouldn't you say? Yeah, you a, a, a full teaspoon of table salt is about two roughly two grams of sodium. Um, Himalayan salt or mineral salt is going to be less sodium because they have other minerals in there. That's why you want to. You want to go with those. They're much more balanced. Yeah. Um, so I don't think anybody puts a teaspoon of salt on their steak or their potatoes or anything yeah. like that. Now you eat a bag of chips, you're hitting that no problem. Um, or a box of crackers or even things you don't think have a lot of sodium. Things that are sweet, they add a lot of sodium to them yeah. as well. Yeah. Yeah. So you'd have to add a lot. But uh, athletes probably should consume... On the low end, low end, three grams, probably like five, especially if you sweat and you work out a day. Oh, yeah. And sometimes you live in like anywhere there's humidity and, and you're outdoors and you're very active, man. That it, You lose Not even just quick. athletes. Wouldn't you argue too, someone who just trains hard and consistent in the weight room? Yeah, so absolutely. even if you're not considered if you, you add an into athlete. That, you add into that. So if you use a, a sauna or a steam room, right, right. you work out, you don't eat heavily processed foods. Yeah, this, so you take the average like fitness enthusiasts or person who just doesn't eat heavily processed foods, you have them add a thousand milligrams of sodium with some balance in there, some potassium, magnesium, right? You have them add like, like element company we work with. 
They make electrolyte powder. One packet is a thousand milligrams. Have them add one a day and ask them how they feel. And they'll mm. almost always feel like they have better performance. Uh, I, and it's like a very a cheap immediate energy boost. It's yeah. pretty crazy. You like. brought up the sauna. I notice a huge difference if I do like the sauna and I forget to take my element. Probably dizzy. and Oh, dizzy. I get headaches. Yeah. Yeah. If I do not, if I don't hydrate, right? If I don't drink water and load up on sodium before I get in there. And if I spend a minute over 20 minutes inside that thing, I'll get it. <laughs> yeah. Same thing with my my uh, jacuzzi at home. I've made that mistake before. Just not even thinking about it. It's like, oh, it's a weekend. Maybe I didn't train. I didn't take my <clears throat> element that day. I haven't had a lot of food. I get in the jacuzzi at night with Katrina. We're sitting in there talking. 20, 30 minutes goes by. I'll come out and I'll have a massive headache if I didn't take the time to actually hydrate and then take some sodium in. It used to happen to my dad. He went to the gym and did the sauna and came home and all day, he's like, I did it too long. I feel terrible. And I said, because I gave some element to my parents, I said, ha throw a packet in there, drink it, and then see if you feel a difference. Huge difference. 10 minutes. Yeah. In 10 minutes, he goes, oh my God, I feel so much better. I'm like, yeah. your, your, your electrolyte balance was off. Yeah. Your body can't operate properly. It's such a cheap... Uh, you know, supplement that has so much potential benefit. And you'll know right away that one of the challenges with supplements is you'll take it and you have to take it for a while to see if there's any difference. If you use electrolyte powder, um, you'll know within the first time you use it, if it's something that's going to be, you'll tell right away, you'll take it while you're working out and you'll notice uh, I feel a lot better. And most athletes benefit from I mean, what some of the first studies, by the way, done on athletes were done on electrolytes. You know, Gatorade was based off of a, an original, it was a University of Florida, right? Mm -hmm. That made yeah, the Gators. this electrolyte powder or drink that they gave to their athletes and they had better performance. By the way, the original is the, Gatorade. Is that the origin of mm -hmm. Gatorade? That's, That's why, why it's, it's called? Uh -huh. That's why it's called I Gator. Gator. That. Yeah. yeah. Really? The original yeah. Gatorade was high in sodium. Yeah. What they were giving their football players. Oh, it was just powder. Yeah, they added it into like the, the big jugs of water. Now it's turned into a commercial bullshit of nothing. Yeah, right? that's now all it's sugar. sugar drink, and yeah. I like, imagine that so they have so many lines, though. they got to have a line still that's more for athletes, right? I mean, they've got yeah, so many now. They they, they did. I mean, even when I played, they, they had like these big um, powdered um, options that weren't like super sugar-based. Like it was more like on the higher sodium side that they would dump they in. they got to, right? Because, yeah, because it was a real threat. Right. Like the, the humidity was just like, you'd lose a good 10, 20 pounds, like just being out there for practice. So they had to like, make sure they accounted for that. That's crazy. Really? Yeah. Oh yeah. That's insane. Oh, you could easily, one of those like four hour type you of practices. Me, dude, big, yeah, we, yeah. They weighed us in before every practice and made sure that we're hydrated. Cause, cause like, it was just like, you'd walk pounds, out, say, that's crazy. you'd lose five, 10 pounds. Yeah. No problem. I, and it was crazy. Cause like one of my first games playing in uh, St. Louis, <laughs> It was 90% humidity. It was like almost like 100 degrees. And so you're just walking outside. You just felt like you're yeah. in, a, in a steam room or something. And it, I, I, I passed out after my first half and like was puking. And I, I had no idea what I was in like in for. So that's, that's it, insane. It was like vital that you had that. That's yeah. crazy. Yeah. Unless you're specifically told by your doctor, um, then you're probably okay. Especially again, if you work out and you eat whole natural foods. This is not an issue. And again, I want to be very clear. The studies that show negative effects from sodium um, don't parse out the fact that they're even eating he heavily processed foods. That's what you're seeing. What you see is, oh, high sodium group, heavily processed food group. Not, it's not, and it's not the sodium. It's the fact that they're eating um, these heavily processed foods. Today's giveaway is the new program we just released, MAPS Old Time Strength. If you want it and you want to win, do this. Leave a comment below this video in the first 24 hours that we drop it. Subscribe to this channel, turn on notifications. If you win, we'll let you know in the comment section. Now, everybody else, it's a new program, new program launch. That means it's on sale. So check this out. If you click on the link at the bottom of the description below or go to mapsoldtime.com, use the code OLD80, you'll get $80 off. Plus, we'll throw in two free ebooks, Forgotten Muscle and Strength Building Secrets and an ebook written by Jay Campbell called Living a Fully Optimized Life. This sale ends August 27th. So if you're interested in building muscle, burning body fat, and looking amazing, uh, then get yourself signed up. All right, back to the show. Speaking of, of football and college and that stuff, so I moved in, we moved my kid into college this weekend, right? Oh, uh, yeah. And I, the reason why that made me think of that was... He's was living just, in the dorms, right? He's living in the dorms. Right. I'll tell you guys all about the experience. <laughs> but, but, but before I do, there was this big family event that was happening um, at night where like the parents of the new students would show up. There were food trucks. 
you had all the athletes for the college there and the cheerleaders and like some clubs and stuff, right? Mm. I cannot believe the size of some of these college football players, these kids. They're like huge. 19, 20. Yeah. Yeah. Bro, there was there was this Samoan dude. There was a Samoan man, like like a grown man, massive. He was like (laughs) six, probably six, six, 260 pounds. (laughs) Just walking around, you know? And they all have their jerseys on, so you could tell that they play football or and it says, you know, football on it. And I'm looking at this kid and I like, I fought the urge. I wanted to go up to him and be like, bro, how much you weigh? You know, but I'm like, I'll be creepy. I'm not going to say anything. (laughs) They're all sitting there. I'm like, these guys are giant. Oh, they're yeah. so big, dude. Yeah. And mean, they're it, kids. They're college. They're going to get so much bigger. And, it's, and you're looking at, I mean, like, it, it, as it gets higher, it gets, like, exponentially crazy. That's what I mean. Like, like, the, it's, like, like it's one thing to see, like, star high school kids. They already look like they're grown men compared to the high school, regular high school kids. Then you see yeah. them go to college. Those college kids. And then the, then the you see elite. Division one. Yeah, then you see D1. Then you see D1. Even, yeah, this is crazy. Yeah, like, these are D1 It's guys. like, Pros. literally, what you see once you get to D1 is... And pro is like the biggest kid, of that all of them. To, yeah. You see, they're all like that. Yeah. Every single one is just a, a freak, man. Yeah. yeah. And I, I mean, I'm, I'm looking at this guy and he looks like a grown man, right? He's got like a beard and he's just massive. And there's like four other guys like him, right? He's like the kid who, had, remember the one kid you guys went to school with like sixth grade? He had like a mustache. Yeah. 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 Like yeah. Like the one kid that yeah, he had like 10 kids. Yeah. But, you know, okay. Facial so hair already. You, you know, when you look at a kid and you can tell they're young by the yeah. way they move and stuff. Sure, so I'm yeah. looking at him and I'm like, he hasn't even reached like his full form. It's like a like big, his final he's form. He's like a big baby giraffe. Yeah, dude. Yeah. I'm like, oh my God. What if that was your kid? You know what I mean? Yeah. Go yeah. clean your room. No. Uh, all right, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> he hasn't even grown into his shoes yet. Yeah. yeah. Oh, it's hilarious. But anyway, so we move him in. And, you would know, you ever want to be that big? Either one of you? Would I? Yeah. yeah. I kind of did. Really? Yeah. No, yeah. I wouldn't want to. No, Why? Not, not Life expectancy, I... bro. Yeah. Bro, that's it's like a bad. that's like a super so, high. So horse. every so you have never done anything that reduces your life expectancy. No, I'm not saying. That. <laughs> I'm not. Well, I ain't saying that. <laughs> I ain't saying that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But I mean, like, you're if you're that massive, like, I mean, even if you're super healthy, like, there, I mean, you're you're. I mean, what's the the like someone who's like well, six eight, three hundred pounds? Yeah. Like, what's their life? They, I mean, hardly. Well, so that you know, long. it's funny about that because I went down to visit my friend, who's who's the guy I lived with in college. He was my roommate. Who was like he's six Mass- eight, yeah, like okay. over three hundred and. Um, I was like, just it's in the Range Rover, and I was driving. He oh, couldn't I could, even fit. I, I couldn't even imagine him. In that. I was like, I, I didn't even think of that, yeah. you know, because like I just know him, and you know, he's been my friend forever, and I just I don't look at him like as this giant dude anymore, you know. And so he goes to get in, and he just like puts it all the way into the back seat, and he's just. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, oh my god, yeah. you know, it's everything's more difficult yeah. when you're like bigger like that too. And my dad was the same thing. He's six seven, and he was always like, he couldn't. He he couldn't drive certain cars like you know being on a plane he was always just like i have to get this seat and he's like very like stern about it I just, otherwise he's like super uncomfortable i just watched a show on netflix about uh the tyson fury family oh uh, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah yeah so yeah. he's giant yeah he's giant uh having a really hard time adapting to regular life yeah it's you. actually a really interesting family it was really endearing um uh so he's they call him the gypsy king yeah yeah bro their culture Remind like they're speaking English or the mm-hmm. English accent. Their culture reminds me so much of like my my dad's family, the Sicilian culture. Oh, the yeah. way they they talk, yell at the kids, and they are with each <laughs> other. I'm like, oh my god, this is so similar. But anyway, he's massive. His dad, they show his dad. His dad's in his 60s, and they show him, and he's he has this really fancy trailer, you know, because he still is like I'm a gypsy, right? So yeah, you gotta have the trailer, yeah. And he walks out, and I looked at Jessica, and I'm like, oh, I could see where Tyson got. I'm like that guy right there. Yeah. If he hits you, he'll break your head. Like, look how, look yeah. at his hands, look at his forearm. Yeah, yeah. And then sure enough, a few scenes later, he's in the gym working out, you know, and he's 60 something years old. And he's just one of those old guys that's just <laughs> strong. Is that the one where he, the cable broke? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> cable broke? Yeah, just just a strong older guy or whatever. And it's a, it was a cool show. But anyway, so we moved my son in. And, uh, oh, man, it's one of the hardest things I ever did. Is yeah. saying bye to my kid. Dude. I imagine this is one. your this is your oldest. This dude. is the first one you got. Go I got through. this crazy flashback. So we're moving. We we drive up there. We're moving him in, and I got this flashback for his first day of school. So I, I remember when oh he was. Oh my god! Little, like kindergarten, first grade, like that. Yeah. Oh wow. Oh, I, so I remember his first day of school. His mom and I brought him, and I remember walking with him, holding mm. his hand, and his and him you saying told me to this me, before. "Yeah," and he goes, "Papa, I'm going to be brave today. I'm going to be because I was trying to prepare him." And I'm like, "Okay, buddy." And we get there, and then we're we're like situating him, and then the teachers will say, "Okay, parents, <coughs> time to go now." Type of deal. Well, my 
wife at the time, she's like, I'm going to leave. You handle this last part. So I said, okay, I'll do it. So she took off. And then, you know, I'm kind of hanging out with them and teacher's like, okay, everybody, you know, time to leave now and said, all right, buddy, I got to go. And he gave me a hug and didn't want to let go. Oh. And I had to, I had to like, <laughs> you're like prying him off. I did. Oh. I remember I pulled oh. him off and he's reaching for me like this with like tears oh. yeah. and the teacher yeah. took him away <laughs> and I left and I was destroyed. Now it's the opposite. I had that. Say that flashback as I was moving him in. Uh, and, okay, know, what is what? Is, okay, what is that? So I find this interesting because I've, you've told the story, and I I can totally relate to this. Oh, like, so hard. So I, I, this is really interesting to me, and I can't wrap my brain around like why this is. So in our in our house, I'm definitely like the stern one, right? Yeah. So I'm more of the hard ass about like with Max, and I'm always talked about the manufacturing adversity shit, right? Like I'm always thinking like that. But then that like I won't even take him to school because of that. Like I would just give up. I would, I, I, Katrina does that for us and she's the strong one that can go through that process. Like I'm so bad that if he looked at me like that, I'm like, all right, cool. Let's go home, dude. Yeah. Let's, I'll take you home. <laughs> you know why? I just, I am. I like yeah. that. Something about that. I'm such a hard ass with all these other things and not sensitive about it. Right. Like get back in your bed. You're yeah. supposed to be like things like that where she's like, come on, just let him. It's okay. Sure. And I'm, but then when it comes to seeing that with him at school and then look at that, like the fear in his eyes that I don't want to go. Oh, I think I'm it, a sucker. So That's the way I dumb. felt, I don't know, maybe you feel like this. The way I felt, I remember the feeling as I peeled him off me and gave him to the teacher. I felt like I betrayed him. So that's how mm -hmm. so it has like to be he's pro that, like or like, or I'm, I'm the protective, yeah. I'm yes. the protective one that. and I'm, I'm not protecting that's him. That's it. Okay. It has something. So that's what I felt. It has to be like that. That's right? exactly Because I'm like, I here I am such a hard ass about all this other stuff. Yep. Doesn't bother me. I'm emotionless. But then all of a sudden when I have to go give him to strangers and see the fear in his eyes like that, I'm like, oh, fuck no. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, you come with me. That's We're exactly good. what I felt. I felt <laughs> like I betrayed my, I felt that like must I be what it is. It's like when you get your kid has to get a shot. You ever feel like that where you're like, distract your kid and he gets shot and at you and he's like yeah. How, yeah. How, how could you father? how could you let this happen yeah. to me you're yeah. like oh i'm yeah. sorry buddy yeah, you know yeah. but anyway so we dropped him off and immediately when we get there you could tell he's like trying to be independent already you know uh -huh. he's trying to do his thing and say like, hey you want to come to lunch he's like no i'll stay here and his mom was having a tough time i'm like we gotta let him we gotta let him do his thing you know and every day i want to like call him or whatever so right so is it i mean he's probably just like super excited to, to go on this whole thing but yeah. like you know and then you're struggling with like are you sure you know like are, are you gonna be okay he's like i'm fine yeah. you know like yeah I can well he's gonna that. figure shit out he has to figure yeah. things out. he's fine he's a smart kid he's he's responsible it's awesome he's that fun. he's excited i mean yeah. i think that's yeah. i think that's what i would probably want as a dad more than anything else is that he's excited to go take life on right like i mean that's a scary time I think that whole thing's way harder for parents right I way mean, harder yeah, way yeah way harder Dude, I rem I'm, I'm like dreading it too i remember thinking i thought how silly my mom was when i moved out she called me every day and she'd cry every day every day she would call me <laughs> and every day she would cry because she'd ask me what i ate and it wasn't whatever you know you're not taking care of yourself and she'd start crying and i'd be like oh my god mom it's fine it's not a big deal <laughs> i just now i know you know what it feels like yeah. i just want him to want to come back around that's yeah. the biggest fear that I have, especially the way, the way I'm divided with my family. And like, mm -hmm. I don't have that pool yeah. to do that. Like that would break my heart. If my son like, doesn't want to come back around, like, man, I really hope that I, whatever it is I in this next 18 years or less than that now, 14 years or mm -hmm. whatever, I, what I want to make sure is that when he leaves, he leaves with the, Oh, I miss dad. I miss family. I want to come back and not the I'm out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I got this, which was my attitude. My attitude was like, let me go. Let me go. Let me go live my life, and then uh, and I don't have that same pool to come back. Dude, I think that's all I want. You guys want to hear something really crazy? Talk about like a small world. This is so wild. So we get there and we we have to park near the dorm so we can unload the car. And then there's kids volunteering who help you bring stuff up, and they have these huge like baskets on they slick these big carts or whatever, and you put your stuff in right. So we park the car. This kid comes out and he's helping us. He's a nice kid. So I'm talking to him and Hey, we, you know, what are you studying? Whatever. And we're talking back and forth. And I said, yeah, we're, we're staying up. But he's like, where are you guys from? I said, well, we're in, we're, we're from San Jose, but we're up in Truckee right now. Oh, really? You got, you got a place up there? I said, yeah. And we're talking. And, uh, he goes, yeah, he goes, uh, I worked on this house, uh, in Truckee. He goes, it was, it was so crazy. He's like, they had this whole gym and they had like a podcast studio in there. And I looked at him I'm like, shut up. Yeah. yeah shut dude. up. I swear to God. And I said, 
was it? And I gave him, you know, I told him where we're at or whatever. And he goes, that's your house. I said, yeah, bro. No <laughs> he goes, way. He what goes, wait the, a minute. What are he the goes, what's the name of your it? podcast? I said, mind pump. He goes, that's so great. The guy so, who fixed our pipe? The guy, yes. The guy no who way. fixed the guy who you fixed met the leaky window. Was there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was a kid. His name is uh-huh. Ty. Yeah. It was a leaky window that yeah. he fixed. And I'm like, you might have oh, met. the leaky oh, window. Yeah, yeah. Okay. It was a leaky window. I'm like, I wonder if you met Justin. But he was like telling me. That's funny, dude. Bro, that's He's always a cool. It was a crazy house. It had like a gym. And I think they had like podcast equipment in there. Yeah. And I'm like, I, I looked at him like, this is a joke. What right? are the chances what are of the that? What are the chances? That's wild. I know, right? Oh, that's yeah. so great. I saw, I saw it as a good sign. Yeah. 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 You know, we just got there. So like, yeah, yeah. it's a good omen, you know? Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Now, okay, so he was just helping out. So he already goes to school there. Older kid? Yeah. Oh, yeah, wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice kid. Well, and then I met a dad who who listened to the show. He was, uh, you could tell he lifted. And we were talking. He's like, I'm an NPC judge. We're like, you know, whatever. I'm like, you dropping your kid off? He's like, yeah. I'm like, this sucks, right? He's like, huh? It totally sucks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So anyway, there he is. So there it is. Yeah. I know. Yeah. It's a it's, big deal. It's weird. I yeah. know. Going home and knowing he's not there and stuff, you know? Yeah. Do you, do you think yeah. you'll go, do you think you'll go up there and, and, and stay up there and, or are you going to be like, let, let him be type of deal? Well, every time I go up, I'm going to try to make time to have lunch with him or something. Mm-hmm. Just to, just to see him, you know? Yeah. But uh, other than that, I mean. Would you guys consider, so Katrina and I had this conversation like recently and uh, we're, thank God we're on the same page, but would you guys consider if like one of you, like say your oldest, like say in eight years, six years, six to eight years, marries and moves to Florida or New York or something like that, would you guys consider moving where your kid is? I have four kids, so that's hard. Yeah, it would depend. Yeah, I would. I would too. Yeah, that's okay. Katrina and I both agree we would. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would. I mean, the, yeah. We. It's funny because like they're young now, and so they want to kind of please, and and they're always like, "Oh, we'll we'll always be kind of close to you, Dad. I wouldn't leave you. We'll buy a house like, across the street. You say that now, yeah. dude. Yeah. You say yeah, that now. You're gonna totally break my heart, Larry. Yeah. Right? You know what sucks is where we live is one of the most impossible places to live if you're a new if you just get into the workforce. Uh, yeah, like, that, affording. That's to live why I here? bring it up because I think it's a very realistic uh, situation that we would be in, right? Like I think that. And I, I guess I didn't really think about that until unless I, you do like the gemstones, you buy like a big block of <laughs> houses. You know? Well, yeah. I also see I also see the struggle that my mom has. My mom d- decided to move like out, and I didn't think about this until I had a son. Right? It was just like whatever. My mom's gonna go move where she wants to live, right? So she moved out in the Timbuktu, like where she likes to be. But then like nobody comes out there. Like mm-hmm. nobody goes out there to see her or visit her. And everybody's busy at their own lives. And we have she has three kids or four kids in three different states. So the likelihood that they're they're yeah. all going to come back, and so I really feel like it'll be and 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 then you can't you can't blame the young kids, right? They're all in their twenties and thirties. I know I'm the oldest at forty, but everybody else besides my sister Cassie are in their thirties and twenties, and so they're all trying to build their lives and figure it out and, and and survive and make it happen. Like they can't afford to fly back or drive all the time and go see my mom. And so I I really think about man, what would I do? If I'm in that situation with Max, and I'm like, fuck, I, it'll be on me. Yeah. It'll be on me as the parent. I'll be the one that probably will be financially stable enough to be able to even do that. And so, yeah, I'd be sacrificing maybe the town or the place I love to be or live in. But, man, I to potentially not see. Especially if you have grandkids. You want to be near. Well, that's what I mean. Yeah. And that's what I'm talking about. I'm not talking about with him. Like, I wouldn't go follow my son out when he's, like, dating some girl out in New York. It was yeah. like, he's doing his own thing right now. <laughs> He'll probably move but, again. As but, a, yeah, exactly. As plays out. But if he, like, hey, settles down, buys a house, yeah. marries, and is they're trying to have a kid, yeah. like, I'm already thinking, like, oh, we got, we're moving well, out well, there. Well, think you know? about it. If you graduate yeah. w- and you get a good degree and then you go start working, you're going to make not enough to live around here. Even you won't yeah. make enough. You have to live with a bunch of roommates or whatever. If you meet someone right around that time, you want to settle down. Let's say you want to start a family. You can't do it. That's here. bro. You know, that's it's only so really reasonable. That's here. only yeah. really happened in the last 30, 40 years. I know. I mean, did you see the all in graph that they put up? I did. Uh, th- th- so that, I think that was over 50 years. Yeah. Yeah. But that's, but so, okay. So we live in a very weird area. A lot of places in the country are totally fine. That's the whole, that was, yeah. that wasn't a California no, thing. No, I'm talking about cost of living. I know what you're talking about. Oh, chart, oh. Yeah. Yeah. That was different. Yeah. They brought up a chart to show the, the, what, what they would call the wealth gap, right? How much the upper, you know, quintile or whatever makes versus the lower. And that gap has grown over time. But that doesn't tell the whole story. And I like the way that they they kind of went over it. was it. a great discussion. Yeah. I mean, I'll, I'll have the boys uh, share um, what episode that was and maybe even like a little uh, like a little sound bite from that. I guess what I'm trying to ask you is, should yeah. those lines shrink? Um, I've said this in the past. If you shrink those lines, you will limit overall progress. 
And what I mean by progress is improvements in productivity, improvements and advances in technology, in business, in economic growth. Because we've seen this many times in the past, there's a certain limit on taxation. So one method is to tax, right? Pull more money out of the top earners and redistribute it. The problem is when you do that, there's less capital in the hands of those who have proven themselves to be good at driving productivity and improving access for goods and commodities and things that are cheaper for everyone. I think that there's an important balance to strike. So I don't think it's about taking away from the top as much as it's about enabling the bottom, if that makes sense. It doesn't because that's what everybody says they want to do. And this is, it's been 50 years of people saying that it doesn't work. But when push comes to shove and the question is, do you believe that the dashed black line or the blue line should be legislatively brought down to meet the other lines? People just evade the question. In my perspective, the answer is no, you cannot do that. And the reason why United States GDP is where it is, is because of that dashed line. It's an existence proof of the fact that this is the largest economy in the world. And so one has to make a really simplistic decision, which is, do you want economic supremacy and then try to figure out ways of rebalancing things, or do you not? I say you absolutely must start with that, which means that that dashed line and that blue line will always have a rate of acceleration that is greater than the other lines. And that's just natural OPEX leverage that exists in any company. It, it created a really, I, one, that's why I love that, that podcast is because you've got, you know, four of these uh, uber successful guys that all kind of have different political views, right? Yeah. So they all, and so to listen to them and they're all very intelligent. So to listen to them debate and argue, like that's a very hot topic, right? Is this like, oh, it's the, you know, the uber rich and what should we do? Should we tax them more or should we level it all out? And so to listen to them all have that debate. You you said it, you felt it was incomplete. I thought it was actually really complete. I thought what they it, did a good job, but they could have gone uh, further because that data, if you just look at the chart, what people assume is that the rich get richer and this is what you hear and the poor get poorer and that's how it stays. It doesn't tell you the whole picture. Well, first off, Margaret Thatcher did a great speech to parliament in the eighties specifically about this. She said, you know, she, she, they were talking about the gap back then. And she said, you would rather the gap be smaller, but everybody be down here versus the gap be bigger, but everybody be up here. And that's exactly uh, what would happen. What the honorable member is saying is that he would rather the poor were poorer, yeah, yeah. provided the rich were less rich. That way you will never create the wealth for better social services as we have. And what a policy. Yes, he would rather have the poor poorer, provided the rich were less rich. That is a liberal policy. Yes, it came out. He didn't intend it to. So long as the gap is smaller, so long as the gap is smaller, they'd rather have the poor poorer. You do not create wealth and opportunity that way. You do not create a property-owning democracy that way. When you have markets, people and companies that provide value are going to continue to earn faster. I'll give you a simple example. If uh, two people invested into a market at the same rate, let's say both of them got 10% returns. One person invests $10,000. The other person invests $500,000. They get the same rate of return. The $500,000 investment is going to get you a lot more money yeah. just in dollars. So if we look at dollars growth, we'll see that the $500,000 investment person is just getting richer faster than the person investing $10,000 because the more money you have, the more, the greater your returns, the more you can invest. Okay. The other part that they don't show in data like that is the mobility between those, uh, th those numbers. Well, I thought they kind of talked about that, which I thought they was did. a great point is yeah. that every one of them. So there's like a, a green, an orange, a red, a blue, and then like a black line. And the, the black yeah. dotted line represents <laughs> the uber rich. The green is like as, you know, Poor. under, under $30,000 a year or right. whatever. And I think three of the four guys all came from that. Yeah. Hmm. So they all had, they, 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 all of them had parents. 85% of millionaires are hundred percent, hundred percent self-made. 85%. Right. That's a cool stat. So, it, you know, that'll, sh I, I'm the son of immigrants that were poor and uneducated. And, you know, so you also see example. I, I lived an example of this uh, with working for 24 hour fitness of because you have like these small examples of where companies change policies that are more, uh, I mean, uh, say socialist ideas for lack of a better word, like where we start to bring up the bottom and, you know, compress the, the upper. Oh, yeah. When they would change the comp plans. Right? And, and so here's how it plays out. Okay. So 
they, they, and this was the, this was literally the tipping point for me of leaving the company was I went through six different comp plan changes in, in eight years. And every time they did a comp plan change, uh, they, they uh, like, it's always to benefit the company, obviously. Uh, but they always still left uh, opportunity. I just had to work harder or find another way. I could still make the same kind of money or even potentially more. I just had to work a lot harder, give more to do that, which, okay. I would force, of course I was frustrated, but I figured it out until the last comp plan change. The last comp plan change was, was the first time. And they literally came out and said it. We <coughs> want more of these D players to become C and B players. And we're less concerned about these A players because they're such a small minority of killers. And so they put a ceiling on us. I can no longer make the kind of money that I was used to making because they, they wanted to take that that cream and they or they wanted to take that extra, chop it off, give it to the bottom to bring us up to make us all more yeah. even. You know what ended up happening? A company you started tanking. Company the company eventually goes bankrupt. And let me tell you something. Everybody of those people that were the top <laughs> performers have all left and gone and made gone. millions yeah. somewhere yeah. else. And so the company for for adopting an ideology like this or is the one that suffers. And so I think that's a, an example of what would ha happen if we did that on a more global Dude, level where we try where we try to do that. Let's, you think it would make things better because it would bring that bottom half up, but you would compress the top so much. between theory and how things actually play Yeah, they, out. Would, they would leave. They would leave and find somewhere right. else to figure it out. Listen, the bottom line is uh, the more value you bring to the market, the more, and, and the market determines your value, whether you like it or not. Uh, we can say that teachers are valuable, but the reality is the market values professional football players more. And how do you know this? They get paid more. Okay. So that's, and by the way, we're the market. So if you don't like something, then go change your, your consumption habits. Yeah. That's just the way it is. Okay. So that's good or bad. The more you value you bring, the more money you make, the easier it is to make even more money. Okay. Here's a good example. The more successful you become, the more free shit you get, the more money you have that you can save, the more you can, you can put into devices and areas that make you passive income. So it just accelerates. Okay. Your, your ability to succeed continues to accelerate the more you make. And people think that's a problem. That's not a problem. The problem is when people look at themselves, compare themselves to other people and say, well, why should they have so much when I have, but the reality is uh, everybody is doing better. Everybody continues. Right. And then the mobility is really good. So here's where where we can fix things, get out of the way for the people on the bottom. A good example is this. You want to start, let's say you want to start a business and they use this example. I, I remember this example. The hair braids. Yeah, this was yeah. a great example on the East Coast. If you wanted to open up a hair braiding business, say all you want to just, all you want to do is braid hair. They have regulations where you have to go spend thousands of dollars taking courses and classes you have to open up a shop that has like two or three sinks in it. There's all these weird regulations just to braid hair. So here you are, you don't have a lot of education. You know how to braid hair real well. You want to start your own business. I don't have $50,000 to do all this stuff. So I can't, I yeah. can't do this business. I can't start. There's a lot of examples of that. Now, why do those regulations exist? It's not to protect the consumer. It's to protect the producer, all these barber shops and whatever. They're the ones that push for these regulations to limit competition. California is a great example. We have like Uber, DoorDash, right? A lot of people go work for these companies specifically because they want the flexibility. They want to make their money. They want to turn it on when they want. They want to turn it off when they want. California politicians, of course, come out and say, hey, they deserve to have all these like uh, guaranteed benefits and all this stuff, which basically would crush how these uh, companies work. And the people who are getting jobs there are like, I don't want that. I just want to be able to go turn it on, turn it off, do my thing. And what, you're, what these regulations are going to do is make it harder for us to do, to be able to do that kind of stuff. That's what you need to do is get out of the way. And the second thing is make it so that education is more market-based because one of the greatest disparities that exists in modern societies in America, if you want to see the difference between rich and poor, go to publicly funded services, not markets, forget markets, go to public schools, go to a public school in a quote unquote bad area and then go to a public school and a quote unquote good, both funded by the state. And you tell me that isn't the most ridiculous, insane disparity. And if you allow kids or parents to make choices to take that tax money and go spend it where they want, then that would help balance that out. Those two things alone would make the biggest Do difference. Do we have any candidates right now that are, or that are presenting that? Oh, because we've talked about that for a long time. And I, and I know that's not like, you know, it's not something we I know thought. Vivek, Vivek mm -hmm. is, is he? Oh Yeah. 
Oh yeah. He's surging. Yeah. I see he passed DeSantis officially, huh? He's second. And uh I just watched him wow. with Bill Maher and and Bill Maher was going at him hard. And oh really? Was, dude, he was so cool and so like honest and he says a lot of shit that makes me go, man, I hope he's got security. Like some of the stuff <laughs> I he know. said. Bro, do you know what he said? Hmm. He wants to put, there's two people he wants to put in charge of auditing the Fed. Rand or Ron Paul. Uh, right right beautiful. away when he said that, I'm like, oh, bro. Yeah. Get your security <laughs> on you, bro. <laughs> that's good. That's not good. He wants to dismantle the FBI uh, and all yeah. sorts of stuff. But he was, yeah. you know, he, he's smart. The guy's real smart. Do you know, what, you know, the back to the conversation of the wealth cap. So, that, you know, what makes it really hard to defend is when you have examples like the Purdue Pharma. Did you see that? Did mm -hmm. you guys see that? What the painkiller documentary that's out right no. now? You have to watch that. Like I knew a little bit of the story, but I really didn't know all the details behind it. And it's, it's another one of those, like, what do you call those again? The docudrama, docudrama, maybe. right? So they yeah. like, it's based on real events and everything like that, but then they have actors and stuff that are in it. And it's, I think it's like a four or six part series, something like that. Really, really, I don't want to ruin it because it had one of those, like my jaw was on the floor at the end of it. Like, uh, but I mean, another example of, you know, uber rich families that pass down the wealth and they put things in place that like really fuck over a lot of people. Let me guess. It's all, it has to do with, uh, uh basically lobbying government to create. Oh, it's the whole, it's, it's the whole Oxycontin yeah. move. Mm -hmm. And yeah. so, so yeah, so they're an example like of, you know, and it, you know, without spoiling it, like even when their, their hand get caught in the cookie jar, you know, they're a phone call away from the white house. You know, who loves regulations, who loves regulations. Yeah. Big business. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Loves it. Keeps when they try to raise, out. you, you know, who loves raising minimum wage, big ass retail companies that can afford yeah. to yeah, and your mom put out pops can't, can't like afford these employees at like certain <laughs> rates. If, know? if Walmart wants to completely destroy all the small businesses, all they have to do is get minimum wage. Well, I remember What's the numbers on that right now. Do we know, like, after COVID, like, how many small businesses just got completely obliterated? It never came back? Yeah, it, it never came back. Because I know a ton. It, it was a huge percentage. A ton, especially in, in our area, that just have never been able to come back. You want to talk about trans transfer wealth? That was forced. Yeah. And that that totally made these big companies explode because the, they could do deliver to your door. They right. got exceptions. Oh, oh right. you could stay open. Yeah, Amazon, but the small businesses stay closed. Bigger than it's ever been. Crazy. You know, you know another percentage is crazy that I just I heard this stat on that that <coughs> telemarketing documentary that's going oh, on right now. It's, oh, on, yeah. it's on the second episode. Yeah, you were telling me. And so uh nonprofits, okay. There's over a million nonprofits. They make up 10% of the entire GDP over $2 trillion a year. And because of the way they're structured, the the hustle is is crazy. Wow. So I've told this story. If you've listened since the beginning, someone's definitely heard me tell a story. I've told the story to many people before about my experience working in medical marijuana and just how corrupt it was and all things like that. I've told you guys before how like I even got shook down by local police yeah. and the fire. And after I watched this, I, for the first time, you ever found that feeling when you recognize as, as a closer, like, oh my God, I got closed so hard and didn't even know. Wow. <laughs> this is how hard Dang. I got closed is that I've been, <clears throat> I've been saying that for over a decade now that, you know, I got basically, you know, had them basically squeeze me for money, right? It wasn't them. It was telemarketers presenting themselves. And I was an easy target because I was working in the gray area. And so these telemarketers were oh, smart man. and knew to call all these dispensaries and say, hey, you should probably donate your money to the boat. And so I, because of the way they probably wow. said it's like protection. Money. Oh, for sure. They, and that's, and like after watching this documentary, I go, Oh my God, I got fucking had. And, and then- well, that's I, that whole hustle with like, um, what, what are they called? Like the um, uh, IRS, like where they're, they're saying like- Oh yeah. That's yeah. why people, it's it's that fear because there's- Yes. The, the majority dude. of people like have probably fudged some- Bro, deals. and on top of you add the fact, so once I got once I gave money to one, I'm on a list now. And so they just call the, that list. It says on it, whales. So, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no, that's how, the, that's yeah. how this is. There's yeah. like, uh, so uh, oh, veterans, man. disability, firefighters, police are the, are the top in cancer, top four of what they do for these. And then the way they are, they're structured, they're in this weird predicament because 
the the police departments are the ones and the firefighters they actually hire these companies to this these telemarketing companies to provide the service because even though they're only getting ten percent of the money, it's more than they would get otherwise. It's more than they would get otherwise, and they don't have the, the manpower to do all this. So they kind of don't give a shit because of it, course. They, they wouldn't get that much money. So they and then the, what ends up happening even when they find out like one of these companies that pops up is doing something illegal. It becomes like a speeding ticket, or they shut them down so they can open it, and they just reopen up another one. Oh, and then, literally oh, wow. within a month, the same hustle rehire people back. They're doing it again, Crazy. and it's just this game that they just they they play. And there's and because they're operating within the law, there's not a lot that the law can do. And they and it makes up ten percent of the GDP. Wow, fucking crazy, That's right? Insane. That's insane. And you remember getting that? Oh, That's crazy. I remember so much because I told so many people that. It was the the police and fire department that got that got me, but now I realize yeah, they ain't that, got the time for that. No, yeah, no. And when I think about the <laughs> phone call, I'm like, oh, you know what? Like, it's not like they. Told it was some me. ex-con. Oh, for sure. Yeah. It was somebody hus hustled the shit out of me, wow. and they got it. You know, and like, and I didn't think twice because, of course, the position I'm what I'm doing. I'm like, oh my god, I'm in Bro, the. Crib. I had a buddy who was he and, and so he was a prime target because so he got one of those calls from someone who pretended to be the IRS. We're the IRS and. We noticed this, that, and the other, and you owe yeah. this much money. Otherwise, we're going to take you to court, maybe throw you in jail. Now, because he was already dancing the line with taxes and stuff, he right. was already like scared. Yeah. The guy convinced him to get visa cards to pay. Oh, God. To pay <laughs> thousands of dollars it's so crazy how this over is the like phone. <laughs> <laughs> to these people, literally six. I think it was like six thousand. Well, he doesn't even register because he's in such a state oh, no, of fear. Guilt. Yes, no, he's got guilt. He's guilt. No, so guilty. guilty. Yeah, yeah. He's, I'll do. I'll do whatever. Hey, yeah. just, just after he paid it, he called me. He's like, "Oh my god, I almost got in trouble." And as he's telling me, it he starts to realize. <laughs> as he's telling this, as story. he's telling me, I'm like, oh, "So I had to go brutal. get, you know, gift cards, and I had to do." And he's like, "Bro, that's oh, how shit." I'm like, "You think the IRS collects money like yeah. that?" <laughs> hey, that's how I felt. That's how I felt telling Katrina the story last night. I'm like telling her as I'm watching this going like, and I'm like having that moment of, oh my God, that wasn't the police. Like I, fucking, <laughs> I like having, I had that moment last night. It was wild. It was like, oh my God, this whole time I've been telling the same story. Like the, like they got over on me, like the cops and it's like, oh no, I just got closed hard by a telemarketer. Wow. Dude. <laughs> that sucks. Dang. All right. I'm going to change direction. I want to talk about these. They're going, they're going like crazy. The, so our, we released a new program, right? Maps, old time strength. In the program, we have three strength challenges based off of what some of these bronze era athletes uh, would do on stage. People are already sharing yeah. and talking all about it. In fact, getting, Doug, do you, have, hyped. do you have the challenges with the percent? I would love to give our audience what the challenges are and how to get to figure out the right weights. Helen, started the, the program, sell, Helen started the sp spreadsheet. Yep. I saw that. Yes. So yeah. that's up. So whether well, you follow them. already in it. Yeah. yeah. And whether you follow the program or not, we might as well put out what these challenges are and let people have fun with that. Could you do that, Justin? Maybe put like a three th slide for Instagram for the main IG yeah. where people can actually yeah, yeah, see. Yeah, I have those posters that, and it outlines yeah, that'd be perfect. Like exactly what and those exercises are and the requirements. And the percentages, right? Yeah, because has so the percentages. The way we design them, first of all, one of them is based off of max strength. The other one is based off of strength stamina. Time. And then the third one is based off of your, your, just, your isometric stability and grit. So three strength challenges. We pick those three mm -hmm. because you're probably going to be good at one of them and not good at the other ones. It gives everybody an opportunity to kind of compete. you shine. You definitely shine in probably one versus the other yes. two. But uh, yeah, it, this is all like a, a big test to see kind of where you stand. You have it out, right? Doug? Total. Okay. Yeah. So here we go. So the first one is a strength challenge. Here's what you do. It's your max barbell single arm deadlift. It's your max dumbbell or barbell bent press. So that's a one arm bent press. We did basically for women, we did the dumbbell and for men, we did the barbell. Yes. Right? And then it's your max barbell hack squat. Now, how do you compete with other people? It's you get your total weight and it's a percentage of your body weight. Okay. So, you know, I did 175% of my body weight, 275% of my body, whatever. That's the number that you present to show how strong you are pound for pound. The second one is called the stamina challenge. This one you do as many dive bomber or Hindu push-ups as you can do. So same same exercise. It's the one where your butt is up and you swing down and come up. The second one is front squats. You take half your body weight. That's the amount of weight that you use. And then the last one is called the seesaw press. 
This is a shoulder press yeah. with dumbbells. Continuous. And you, continuous, one arm after another. You do as many reps as you can. Women pick 10% of their body weight per arm. Men pick 15% of their body weight per arm. And for this, the number that you give is the total reps. You add all the reps up for all of these. And then, so I did, you know, 275 reps or 150, whatever, right? Mm -hmm. The last one is the grit challenge. With this one, you do a dumbbell single arm overhead hold. For women, it's 30% of your body weight. For men, it's 50% of your body weight. The next one is a barbell suitcase hold. So that's a barbell on your at your side. Women, 50% of the body weight. Men, 70% of the body weight. And then the last one is called a chin over bar hold. So you pull yourself up over a bar. If you're a man, for women, you just start that way. Hold your chin over the bar and you do that uh, for time. The, the number you present is the total time. Yeah. How much total time you did for all three of them, that's your number. I'll tell I'd love to see these people yeah. post these. Yeah, if you if you tag Mind Pump Media, I'll let Chokey know since she runs that to we'll start sharing these stories. Yeah. So anyway, this will be fun to see yeah. what people share uh and stuff and see what's going on. But people are already talking about them. So and it's cool because it's an alternative to like powerlifting or you know, like most strength events are so you know <laughs> unilaterally kind of focused. Or you do CrossFit, that doesn't make any sense. Yeah. So at least with these, yeah. you know, we see what these look like and then see what people yeah, They're share. specific. Yeah. yeah specific so, uh, challenges. Yeah. For, yeah. Have, those have you, attributes. Have you taken the kids down to uh, Monterey Zoo yet? The, no. You need to oh, do Oh, you, you know, we're to supposed do. to. I'm telling you right now, that is like. So Katrina was telling Jessica, it was amazing. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, we we go all the time now. I think there's an owl over here. You like owls too. What does the sound does the owl make? Ooh -hoo, ooh -hoo. There's a parrot here. Oh, there's a parrot. But I've I have never been and seen more than five people. Really? It doesn't matter if it's a Saturday or Sunday. It's just nobody knows about it. Do they it. have like all the cool animals? Yes. Like bears and yes. elephants and Yes. Wow. Lions, tigers. How long has it been bears? a thing? Like is it a fairly new It's Monterey so, or Marina? It's right by Marina, but it's Monterey. Okay. So if you put Monterey Zoo and that's what it'll, it'll pop up. Um it, it, Justin, it was like this, um, like a rescue uh, of all these animals. And then it wasn't an actual zoo until like, I think like four or five years ago, maybe a little longer okay. now. Somebody, yeah. Cause I never somebody, heard of it. Like, I didn't, I didn't know about it either. And Katrina heard about it. I, I believe, uh, Jerry's husband, uh, my brother-in-law is actually, actually worked there as a kid. So, oh, wow. and that's, he worked there when it was like a rescue. Right. Huh. But I mean, it's immaculate. So clean, has every main animal, and it's like, what's your favorite animal to look at? Oh, that's a good question. What do I? What do I? I I love like tigers, and I love big cats. Yeah, big cats are cool big to me. Yeah, cool. I like to watch. I like to watch big cats. I like gorillas. Yeah, yeah, gorillas don't fuck around. No, it's yeah. I, I'll sit and stare at a gorilla for an hour. <laughs> yeah, I no could watch. I could watch any any they're monkey. Intimidating, dude. Yeah, monkey or gorilla. You, you know why I like gorillas? Because they're similar to humans. Yeah, so you so can they, see like the muscular development on them. They, they the see like right through you too. Right. They just look at you, and you're like, oh god, bro. Their arms and delts just look so insane. Yeah, you know, they don't even body build it's crazy i yeah. just I, love, I think big cats are just like beautiful animals I you, like you ever go to oh, a, yeah, a I love listening to them yeah. they're, they're before they're hungry i was gonna know? say yeah. do you ever go where they feed them and mm -hmm. you hear yeah. them all roaring and yeah. stuff it's so loud yeah it's crazy yeah How but insane. i mean it's such a cool like spot that i swear that nobody nobody goes to and it's a great because i'm like i hate like the crate when you go to some of these big zoos like san diego even san francisco packed. so packed yeah you know, and you're trying to, everyone's like against the glass or thing. And it's like, you can't see. It's like, we literally go there and it's like, you have every exhibit to yourself. I have a good, I have an Sweet. interesting question because I've been to the exhibits where they feed the cats and they're always giving them steaks, like big ass, like steaks. To, and I don't know if that's for the people to watch, if that's what they always feed them. Mm. Do you, do you, maybe you can look this up, Doug, because if you're a wild cat, you're a tiger or a lion, you're eating grass fed everything. You ain't eating, no, you're not eating like a normal convention are they feeding them grass-fed meat bro you just brought something up that's really hmm. crazy because i wonder if that's the because so, I mean, that's their natural right what are their you, health goal are you, half an animal are you guys familiar with t24 that's that famous tiger they called the man eater there's a documentary about oh it. in india yes killed like hundreds four. of people no just four. Oh, okay. eight four like full eight like attacked eight and them? eight them. not like defended himself and that was like the big the big debate right there was a bunch of uh, there was a yeah, huge activist movement creepy. behind it and everything because over and if it was in like the course of eight or ten years that this tiger literally attacked and ate for four men but 
the interesting the, the the tiger ends up going into they eventually put it in captivity and they have to feed it and it ends up having to have surgery because of uh digestion issues so it, uh, your point is probably exactly what happened. They were, and they, they, and they documentary briefly talks a little bit of, but just about like the animal, not to mention that, but also like the part of the digestive process is the moving and the hunting and the like oh, being yeah. active. Yeah. And so you put them in this cage and just feed them this big chunk of probably not grass fed beef. That's wild. Like, and the, the, the kill, the hunt, the, the walking afterwards doesn't really happen. It's like the fast food version. Of so it. He, now, he had all the, he had that surgery over like digestive issues. Now I read, I don't know if this is correct, but I read that if you get eaten by a, tiger it kills you first so it like bites your throat kills you and then eats you yeah it's if like you a get gentleman's eat, death if you get eaten by a polar bear it just starts eating you it eats you like it that. holds you down and just starts isn't eating it you. like a hyena or something eats you ass first oh <laughs> is that true yeah, <laughs> yeah like dude. well you're still alive is that oh wow that's there's crazy. some of those animals it's like man, i'd be like i'd like what a choke way myself to go. i mean go to yeah. bed, die <laughs> quick <laughs> ah, yeah. and you're just getting eaten like you're yeah like i heard like a polar bear will literally hold you down and just start eating you yeah well that's i mean that's the polar brutal. they're like the biggest right they're bigger than a grizzly right they're they the most vicious i mean they hunt people yeah i mean the food's scarce so they're opportunists it's like if they if it's in front of them they're gonna pounce they're the only bear that i think is a pure carnivore mm -hmm. if i'm not mistaken i know all the grizzlies and stuff eat berries omnivores, and stuff. Yeah. yeah they're omnivores but polar bears only eat meat oh i didn't know that yeah mm -hmm. so if like you're an explorer and you see a polar bear then it, the odds are he's tracking you well that's yeah. also probably because when you're if you're a polar bear where you're at there isn't any of fruit yeah. <laughs> seals. So there's no yeah. Yeah. You, have no, you have no choice but fat and yeah, protein yeah, right yeah. so that's i know kinda, what are you gonna eat <laughs> yeah. strawberries yeah. <laughs> oh, i saw this funny video there's this guy like kayaking and uh i swear I, I swear i don't know if it's this year or not but like there's been more of these like um sea animal attacks or like they're like coming after humans but there's a seal it's that Aquaman. it literally had a um a huge octopus in its mouth and it gets up out of the water and slaps him in the face with this this what? octopus dude it was the funniest thing i've ever seen and like the caption on it was like uh because he had scratches on his face like he was trying to explain it to his wife like listen like a seal <laughs> came up <laughs> slapped me with an octopus like <laughs> we were trying to justify yeah. it you know like sure honey yeah, don't you? What, what, nobody yeah. will believe that story. yeah nobody's gonna believe you what happened to your face yeah you'll never believe this yeah <laughs> never a seal you're gonna what? have to sit down for a this. seal scratch your face no 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 a he seal slapped me in the face with what? an with octopus. An octopus. <laughs> yes. You know what we were cracking up about this week? We were at we were at uh, Fisherman's Wharf, right? And the the sea otters were like crazy, and they are all beached right there. I don't know if you guys saw the my video and stuff, but we were like, I mean, from me to Justin, They're the cutest next, animals ever. Well, you know what we were cracking up about? I mean, they were just all beached in this area. Is the like one? They'll be like, there's a bunch of them. They're like passed out over here, and then there'll be one that comes out of the water, and he just hops across all of them, and you can see him get pissed. You know what I'm saying? Like you're dead asleep, and this big old fat sea otter <laughs> jumps on you, and they start fighting and stuff. And we must have watched them for about 20 minutes. Max was cracking. You know up. when they sleep on their it's back? Funny. So they're cute, right? They're like super. I love them. When I was a kid, it was one of my favorite animals. When they sleep, they hold hands. Do you guys know that? So they, really? don't float, they don't float it's away ridiculous. from each other. I didn't yeah, know yeah they'll, they'll lay on their backs See? like this, and then they'll hold their little. They're little, literally like. Little like little like almost dogs you know they just get the little fuzzy face i also yeah. didn't know that that uh tigers are another one of those animals that pick one mate for life they'll stay they'll stay with they'll stay with the same mate. they do yeah i didn't oh. know that because I, I thought there I, someone told me it was only like oh that's true penguins that's true i knew that lions are they're different lions will yeah have lions are different yeah they're, they you know you know tigers are bigger than lions but lions are better fighters don't mm -hmm. don't ask me how i know this i, I looked this up what, oh i actually but, looked this up that's not true so it's like so. No, they, I heard so. This so is, so here I've, I went okay, down I the rabbit hear, hole and right, researched. Hear what you read. Okay. are big and fat and useless. So, so in the cases where a, a a they've had this multiple times, where a tiger has gotten into a lion's cage or like at a, at a zoo, yeah. and the tiger wins every time. But there's theories that in the wild, if a tiger were to at, attack a lion, the lion would win, but because he's in a pack. Because lions go in a pack like that where a tiger runs solo. So here's what so I read. Because in, in captivity is different. Yes, right. It's always that's, very different. Right. So, so what I've read, and then Romans have, uh, the, from the glad, from the Colosseum, they have accounts of the most fearsome animals. The, the hippo was the one that used to kill everybody. messes right. everybody up. But the, the, a, a tiger, excuse me, a lion fights all the time. Lions always fight with each other. That's why they have a big mane. Yeah. protects their neck there's tigers are visible solitary too. Yeah. yeah so tigers don't have good fighting skills tigers are basically. a lot more elusive too because they you know they have the whole jungle and like their environment is yeah. different so they can hide and then pounce yeah. a lot more like i mean now, 
Well, that I being w- said, didn't He Man ride a tiger? It was a tiger, right? Yeah, it was a tiger. Okay. <laughs> so that's, that solves the argument. <laughs> that solves Battle the cat. argument right there. It was Mike Battle drop. Cat, you know? <laughs> yeah. Anyway, back what you to got, what you got, Doug. Let's see. This, yeah. Oh, this is the same art. I read this right here. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, tigers generally have the upper hand. See, yeah, but that's 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 in uh, that's bro. I captivity. literally went down in captivity. I went down this rabbit hole reading all this after that. It's so funny <laughs> that you say that. Like I, because I was just curious. I'm like, you know what? Which they one? are bigger. They would tigers take out they'd t- a grizzly bear. Like how how would they fare? Grizzly bear wins. Yeah, right. Oh, it's yeah. huge. Or uh, polar bear would win. Yeah. Polar bears top. Yeah, yeah. Polar bears got an extra foot or two. A hippo a bear. kills all of them. Yeah. Well, yeah, hippos. Yeah, the R- only one that can rhino be, rhinos up there too. The only one that could build all of them is an elephant. You ever seen videos of elephants going up against like ri- like rhinos? Yeah, an elephant is so big and strong, it's insane. Like a rhino, like and it just kicks it over. Like it's yeah, like nothing. It's like a building just smashing you. <laughs> you know. Yeah. Anyway, all right. I mentioned uh, grass fed meat. Um, I know I've totally talked about this that. many many times, but the tri tip from Butcher Box is the staple for sure. Staple, staple, staple. Yeah. It's the easiest to cook. It tastes good. One of my favorites. I have to, yeah, I just got to mention that because people will send me messages and say, what should I put in my box? And I'm like, dude, if you want a good cut of meat that's easy to cook, you sear it, throw it in the oven, tastes good. Uh, it's got nice, you know, some fat in it. Go with the tri-tip. Well, you know, it was a surprising one that we we ordered. Um, it was like uh, something I normally order from Starbucks. I, I'll have like my, I'll have my nitro and then I get like my sous vide eggs. And, and so we got the, the egg bites. I just the got them. Did you get, try yeah, it? I haven't tried them yet. We just got them. Yeah. They had, so they I had, had them over the weekend. They have the sous vide. Oh, you did. They have yeah. the sous vide eggs. They're in my freezer right now. They're great. I knew you were going really? that direction. Yeah. I was totally like surprised because I was like, ah, how are they going to like, I don't know because you know you get them like frozen and then how's that going to translate? You want and they're great, they're good. Yeah, yeah. I'm still, we're still crushing their. their I was just their, like, their okay, it's a good option. I no, eat gluten free nuggets as a meal now. Sometimes I feel like a child. But they're so really good. good. I know they're so. I'll have good. like 15 of them. You remember when I first told you guys about that? Box. I mean, they bro, they cut. They got a lot of good stuff that I didn't. I wasn't. I don't get on there enough and actually dig through all the. I stuff. always do. I don't. I don't do that enough. And I've been cheating on Butcher Box lately with my my butcher lately. So I got to get back to. Diving in my butcher you're box. A, you're a, a polyamorous Damn. butcher. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Lock Person. alive. Getting those po- polyamorous ones. meat eater. Oh, yeah, yeah, dude. Uh, I, I had. To, I told Doug the other day. I've been getting so crazy with the 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 wagyu or the A5 stuff that it's like I actually went to the butcher and asked for a a, a lesser cut. I'm like, it's too. I was eating so much of it, it's rich. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so even as much as we all love that, that so you much guys, fat. I'm getting gout. Yeah. yeah, I was uh, I was starting yeah, I was starting down. to cook it. I was starting to cook it a <laughs> lot, and I'm like, you know what? Like, I actually was craving a, a, a lower grade steak because I was like, dude, this, it's so rich that you can only do it so often. Mm-hmm. I feel like, and it's yeah. like overdoing it. Good stuff. All right, do we have yeah. any shout outs for today? Anybody have a shout out they want to throw out there? How about the Monterey Zoo? That's a shout out. All right, I like yeah. that. No, like yeah, that. so I think that's a dude. Go if you live in the Bay Area. Use code yeah. Mind Pump. Get nothing off. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> tell them anyway. Yeah, yeah. yeah. get nothing yeah. off. Mind Pump. Tell them to create one. Yeah. Yeah. No. That's my shout out. It's a seriously. It's a it's a it's a hidden gem. If you got kids, you live anywhere in the Bay Area, it's worth. We're going heading over there to go hang out for sure. All right, let's talk about probiotics. Good probiotics have been shown to reduce depression, improve athletic performance, recovery, help the look of your skin, help with sleep. I mean, your microbiome is so important for your health. Well, anyway, there's a company we work with called Seed, and we believe them to be the world's best probiotic. It is phenomenal, and it is put in a capsule that survives some of the digestion tract and delivers the probiotics to where they should be delivered so you get the full benefit. It's the best probiotic I've ever used in my entire life, hands down. Anyway, go check them out and get 30% off. Go to seed.com forward slash mind pump. Use the code mind pump and get 30% off your first month's order of Seed's Daily Symbiotic. All right, back to the show. First question is from Caroline Norris L. If I don't care how long it takes for me to reach my weight loss goals, that's down 15 pounds of fat, how long should my cut or reverse diet cycles be? So this is a very uh, individual type question. You want to base your reverse diet and cuts off of how you feel um, and how you're performing. Okay, so to be more specific, if your calories start to get really low, and you still have fat to lose, then you probably want to start a reverse diet and start focusing on building. You want to get that metabolism to speed up because at some point you'll end up too low to where it's not sustainable. So typically, and this can be different from person to person, but typically you're looking at a three to one ratio 
of time spent in a cut versus time spent in a reverse diet, okay? Typically. Now, for some people, it's different. But generally speaking, it would be like uh, you're doing a month, so three weeks cut, one week maintenance, reverse diet, three weeks cut, one week reverse diet, you know, type of deal. Generally speaking is what you're looking at. And how long will it take you to reach that 15 pounds of fat loss? Again, it depends on the person. If everything's crushing and you're doing a great job, metabolism's healthy, you got good muscle, I mean, you could lose 15 pounds in like a, I don't know, eight week, uh, you know, just pure body fat in about eight weeks. That would be really, you're, you're just blazing. Um, most people though would take probably, uh, probably another four, four to six weeks on top of that. I, I like that as general advice. Obviously it's, it's general, right? Because we have, everything is going to be based off of the individual, but I think that's pretty good advice to do this, you know, three week on one week off type of concept as long as you can or want. The <coughs> other like kind of generic piece of advice I give to somebody in, in this position is my goal always as a trainer was to get your calories to a place where it was actually hard for you to eat that much. I think that's such yes. a good place to be, right? Like where if you've done a really good job of reverse dieting and building muscle and reverse dieting and building muscle and, and speeding that metabolism up, you eventually get to a point where it's a bit of a burden to eat that much food to keep up with your roaring metabolism. And it's a place that I think as a trainer, you always wanted to get your client to, right? They're like, oh my, and it's a great to have a client who's trying to lose body fat tell you, man, Adam, it's just so hard to eat all that food you're having me eat. And I go, oh, great, this is perfect. Now let's cut back a little bit on these calories. And that way, when I cut back on the calories, they're in this sustainable place when they get, because it's it's already one challenge to lose the 15 pounds of fat, but the even more difficult challenge is to keep it off. People lose 15 pounds all the time. Most people probably listen to this podcast have experienced losing 15 or 20 pounds before, but the hard part is keeping it off and maintaining that. By far. And one of the best strategies to doing that long-term is making sure that where you're at calorie-wise is sustainable. It's a place that you could go, I could eat here. I could live in this 22 to 2,500 calorie range. And as long as I have the the physique and feel good, man, this is a great place. And so, and you can only do that if you've slowly inched those calories up to a place that is towards like, wow, that's a lot of food for you. And then coming back the other direction. Otherwise, if you just keep cutting and cutting and cutting from where you're currently at, you end up losing your 15 pounds, but you're eating uh, 1,200 calories a day. And that's just not sustainable. Yeah, yeah. So to put it plainly, you want, you want to be in a position where your body naturally burns a lot of calories because then it makes the fat loss sustainable. Period. End of story. Next question is from Nikki Fricky. I know you mentioned eating whole foods, which is something I strive for and tell my clients to aim for. However, it feels like this then causes categories of food to be eliminated, such as gluten, bread, pasta, flours, dairy, what falls under the umbrella of whole natural foods, according to you guys? Yeah, dairy is 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 I would hundred percent consider yeah, yeah, you gotta consider a, a, a whole natural. a whole natural food. Um, it does eliminate a, a large category of foods. It's heavily processed foods. All right, what are whole natural foods? Foods with one ingredient. I mean, that would that would be it. Uh, does bread fall under whole natural foods? It's kind of in between. But I will say mm -hmm. this: most people, not most. Most people with food intolerances, okay, most people with digestive issues and food intolerances or skin issues would do better avoiding uh, gluten containing uh, flours. That's just my experience. So if mm -hmm. that's you, then you probably, I, have, I haven't met a lot of people who can eat a whole food based diet and include bread and feel okay. I just haven't met a lot of people like that. Most people, if they remove that, tend to do a lot of better, a lot better. Now, this is coming from someone who's, yeah. I mean, my, my family loves bread. We're Italian. I get the whole deal, whatever, and pasta and all that stuff. Um, I would I would say they're kind of in between, but you have to really assess whether or not it causes uh, digestive issues for you or skin issues. Those are the two categories I would look at. Yeah, I mean, similar. It's most clients I've ever trained. Uh, there's not really any of them that have gone away from bread that didn't feel an immediate benefit from going away from those types of foods. And so there's other options like in the carbohydrate uh, lane and, and rice and, and potatoes and things like that would, you know, a lot of times be a great supplement to that. But uh, yeah, in terms of like, you know, eliminating those, I think that, um, uh, yeah, if you're trying to just 
just keep it there to keep it. Like you got to really assess whether or not that's like something that really is doing a lot of benefit for you. I mean, anyway, I, I'd say I live like 80, 20 and I'm always trying to be 90, 10. What do you eat? That's processed. Uh, I'll have pasta and bread every now and then. Okay. Yeah. yeah. That's pretty much but, it. Right. But very rare though. You're not like a boxed food or no, no, yeah. no, no, no. We, I mean, we eat, pri- like I said, 80, 20, I'd say I'm 80, 80 percent and I, I'm 80, 20 and I'm always striving to be 90, 10. Yeah. Like, I think that's kind of the, how I know. And I used to be a big bread eater. So, and I noticed a big difference when I, when I cut it out. It was skin, just, right? Yeah. Yeah. On my skin and I would, and also water retention and bloat. I used yeah. to get a lot of water retention and blow from it. Liked it going down. But when I really started to like unpack like how I felt afterwards, how I looked from it, like what it, the next 24 to 48 hours from having a big old, you know, Togo's or Subway type of sandwich, uh, how I felt the next day. And just you know, being honest with myself, I if I replaced that same amount of carbohydrates and calories with something like white rice or even like a, a, a baked potato or sweet potato or yam or quinoa, I mean, definitely there was a, a night and day difference of my digestion, how my skin, um, water, to all that stuff. And so- because of that experiment for myself years ago, I've forever now it's like, okay, that's my staple. I don't do that, but it doesn't mean that there's not times where, you know, someone served my, we're making something and there's garlic bread. And so I'll have a slice of garlic bread or what that. So I try and stick to about 80% of my stuff is, is whole foods. I would, the other, by the way, bread is a big category of, there's, there's a lot of different kinds of breads. So they're not all created equal. You could get, Sprouted, Sprout, yeah. yeah, sprouted. Real sourdough is pretty good. Sourdough, traditional sourdough. Dave's yeah. bread, not not, yeah. not the processed stuff. So um, I noticed a big difference in that too. Sourdough so is a just, big difference. If yeah. I just make that choice of having sourdough, you know why? makes a it's big difference. It's got a very low rate, of, of low amount of gluten, mm-hmm. and then the the how sourdough is made, it's almost like it's uh, it's broken down. It's fermented. Yeah, it's fermented bread essentially. That's why it's sour. Yeah. So sourdough, traditional sourdough bread, sprouted wheat, Ezekiel. Is a as a company that will make uh, bread that's like this, um, and then pastas, you know, it's it's hit or miss for some people. I I'll they eat make pasta free pasta and quinoa pasta. Yeah, which I, I have. I could do that no problem. Mm-hmm. I can, I'll have traditional pasta. I don't know once a week. Fade at my mom's house, then I'll have. Tra- but I notice, you know what I get? I get I'll get some of the bloat, but I get uh, energy crash. Oh, about that, 30, 40 minutes that's later, a good point. I want to go to That's sleep. what I get from a big sandwich, too. I didn't say that, but that's the other thing I noticed too. Yeah. Like I've about two hours later, I'm yep. like wanting to fall asleep from it for sure. Yeah, it's tough to get uh, fat. To, I mean, if you you have to avoid dairy, like I get it. Like, there's there's probably a, a good chunk of the population that can't handle dairy, like, and it's it gives them gut issues. But um, for people that can handle it, I mean, if you're gonna just that's a pretty big category not to consider in terms of like you know anything from milk to uh, you know butter and and cheese and like everything else. Like for me, like obviously, yeah, you guys give me shit all the time, but like it's. <laughs> It, where else am I going to get that? I mean, I could get, you know, olive oil. I could get kind of creative and, and go in, in like the nut category and all that stuff. But like for me, I get plenty of my good fats from from dairy. I just, I think that one of the things that I learned for myself and I always try to coach and teach is clients is the things that you just tend to abuse. There, I went through a, a time in my life where every morning I had uh, toast with my, my breakfast and or cereal. And then for lunch, I had this massive huge bread sandwich and that was like every day and simply eliminating that and saying like okay i'm not that's not gonna be a choice anymore 80 percent of the time made a massive difference doesn't mean that like every occasionally i don't have a sandwich i don't enjoy those things but just by flipping that on its head instead of it being like you know instead of it being in my diet 80 percent of the time it's now in my diet 10 to 20 percent of the time and that that makes a big difference and so i think i i've tried to teach my clients the same thing is like let's look at these these potentially gross offenders and let's try and uh, evaluate how often they're in your diet and let's dramatically reduce it. Let's eliminate it first and see if you notice a difference of improvement. If we notice a difference in improvement by eliminating that food, then let's make it a goal to keep it out for as much as you possibly can, shooting for that 90%. And if as long as you find yourself falling around 80% of the time, I think you're pretty successful at that. Next question is from Teresa13. Can you mix creatine in with things ahead of time, such as in your overnight oats? Yeah, um, you probably will stay stable within 24 hours, but there's a there's a probably in there. I, I creatine can start to break down and turn into there's certain byproducts that could be uh, that the creatine can turn into that make it not necessarily as good for oh, you. Oh, this person is meaning like put it in there and, and leave, leave it. it. Oh, yeah. 
No, I mean, okay, you know, and this is when when people would ask me this, it's like, how hard is it to take creatine right there? And there? <laughs> Put it in there, yeah, right before you. Eat yeah, it. or just throw it in your mouth and wash it down with water. I mean, I imagine it tastes like nothing. I think I imagine it's somebody who has just found that that's I mean, easy and convenient, and, so they just, and they just want to know that am I am I losing yeah. the the gains? From you don't want to keep getting... it. You don't want to keep it in water for too long. Um, because, I mean, you'd be what you'd be yeah, far better off it. is it's overnight oats. Is that in the morning when you go to eat yeah, your you own ice, you just throw the scoop in, then yeah. you'd be better off than that. But I think it's only like things that are like acidic where it's really going to break it. Degrade Even in water break. over time, um, it can it, it can start. I mean, if you read about creatine, it says it can it stays stable up to about twenty four hours, hmm. which tells me that probably wouldn't. I, I would probably take it right right when I want to take it, not you know leave it in some. That being said. Um, we've been preaching now for, I don't know, eight years on how great of a supplement creatine is for just health, not just muscle building, not just fat loss, not just bone density, but like health. Uh, I've talked in the past about like heart health, liver health, brain health, all better when people take creatine. Did you guys know a study just came out connecting creatine to a reduced risk of cancer? I saw that. Yeah. How insane Crazy. is that? Yeah. Now it makes perfect sense to me. And I and by the way, this was like a correlation, so it's not proven yet. Well, just from it being muscle sparing in itself. It well, should, I believe we're going to see data that's going to show that it, it it unequivocally reduces cancer risk because of the how it fuels the mitochondria. If you look at cancer, mitochondrial dysfunction is a uh, it's like a foundational part of cancer. In fact, this is the Warburg effect. This they discovered this a long time ago, where you take cancer cells, you don't feed them sugar, some of them die um, because of the the way the mitochondria is functioning. Creatine. It helps have healthy mitochondria. It also helps with methylation of the body. Oh, so healthy mitochondria like, paired with also muscle sparing to me seems. I, I, mean, I agree. Those two things are huge. Yeah, I think the older you get, the more important it is to take creatine. So, yeah. so take it, but I wouldn't mix it in something and then leave it uh, overnight. I would take it right when you want to take it. Next question is from Marina Lifts. Adam once said in a very old episode that he thinks marriage should be a lease where each partner agrees to renew their contract every few years. I was wondering if his thoughts have changed now that he is married. What's your thoughts, Doug? What do you think? <laughs> My thoughts? <laughs> I've, I've, I've never been married. Yeah. And uh, I, I actually had a conversation last week about this with this uh, woman. And, you know, I think uh, marriage works for some people, but I, I also feel, too, that a lot of times when people get married, they actually change the way they relate to the other person because now they feel like they have this this binding contract from the state saying that now you're married now you get half of everything now i can do whatever i want and you know not have to put in the effort for I, so that's just my opinion for the audience might that, not be popular that hasn't been listening that long uh i, I, I can't remember if I read this somewhere or how this, how this came to be, but I just, uh, I, you know, it's half of this is tongue in cheek, but then there's some, I think there's some truth to it too, that I thought it would be this great idea that you just like you, uh, renew, uh, you know, a loan or re renew insurance or you renew anything that you had every five years that anybody who's been married. And then I said two or five years. I don't remember how I think it was five is what I said. Uh, every five years you have this like, Hey, it's been five years. We need to uh, agree to continue this, this, you know, this on or part ways because we've realized how difficult it is. And we don't like each other, and we want to go different directions. And just I thought, why do we not do that for as serious as and of a commitment as marriages and almost anything else that you are that serious or committed to in the real world? Like you have these opt outs. Now you still, you still, yeah. you still there. I mean, I so for the audience that doesn't know, like Katrina and I legally are not married. I I uh, I think of her as my wife. I call her my wife, which is why this person probably thinks this is because I I you know I absolutely think that I've proposed to her. She has she's the beneficiary and everything. She has my social. She has access and control of all of our money. She has my child. So I mean I'm as I'm as married as I feel I can be to that woman without bringing the government involved. I mean that's the literally the the difference maker for us. And I don't know, I, I, there's a part of me that I kind of agree with Doug. There's this, I've, and I've wondered sometimes like we're at what, 13 years we've been together. You know, is there, is, is there, is there this subconscious like thought that, oh, because we're not legally bound by the government that it, it, we could break apart 
easier than the person that would be legally bound that way. And so does that keep each of us? Well, you already have a kid with her and all that stuff. You're screwed anyway. Well, In that's that right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, From that's that how, sense. I mean, that's how I feel. Like, like I feel like there's, uh, there's not much difference for legally that she would or wouldn't get by us being married. Right. So, um, but my point, and what I was talking to Doug about this off air before you guys came in and, you know, and I think I agree to him that there's this, I don't know, there's this sense of because we're, we're legally not that I'm always working to impress her and working to keep her. And like, so I kind of have that where I do think that there, I, I see a lot of relationships where people get very complacent when they mm -hmm. get that, when they get that ring or they get that official contract and it's like, half your shit's mine and we're, we're good to go. And then all of a sudden they fall out of shape or then all of a sudden they become this, this crazy dick or bitch. And they just have the, like, they change, they change dramatically, yeah. um, from the person who was, totally I don't think this would fix that though, to be honest with you. I, so as look, being the most married person in here, I've been married twice. <laughs> <laughs> I think my opinion Winning. is heavy. Yeah. Uh, no. <laughs> Listen, I, uh, I don't think this would, would, would fix any of that. I think, um, uh, First off, it is a very important, serious thing. I think if you talk to people who've been married for a long time, they'll tell you they've went through tough periods. Now you think, well, how long is a tough period? You're like a week, a month, years. Yeah. Talk yeah. to people who've been married for 50 years. I'm like, oh, there was that five-year period where it was really, <laughs> five-year period yeah. where it was really, really hard. Yeah, yeah. So that's what you're signing up for. Now, if you stop trying, uh, well, that's that's the problem. The problem isn't, you know, I, don't, I think this makes... You don't think that's so much what you're easier. trying to do with this is is create accountability for that sort of uh, uh, drive in your relationship to to continuously improve and grow and evolve together and have that kind of dynamic relationship. That's what a relationship should be, uh, and you should already be kind of thinking in those terms of like both of you have to like take that kind of. Uh, assessment is like, what am I bringing to the table? And this has to be a constant well, conversation you have. And so I understand where you're coming from with this. However, I'm a, a bit more of a traditionalist. And in, in, if I'm vested in somebody, like I'm, I'm going to bring that. It's all or nothing. Yeah. I'm bringing that in. And if you're not going to match that, you're the one that's slacking. But but I I know I, I'm i confident I chose a partner that is growth-minded like that and, and is going to put in the work. And it is work. It's not like it's something that just uh dude works itself out you, you, you really have to work 100 percent. you're going to choose to be with this person that you're saying we're going to stay together for the rest of our lives and especially if you have children together you're going to go through a lot over 30 40 years forget a year two years five years like 30 40 years you're going to go through a lot of crazy stuff death losing a job you make some fucked up mistake you go through depression Someone, you know, something happens, like you're going to go through a lot of shit. And so you have to, it's like the only way, in my opinion, to succeed at it. And most, and there's a lot of people that don't succeed at it. I mean, I didn't the first time, um, is to be all in, in my opinion, well, it's okay, like, so how, how can do, you have one so, foot in one so foot how does out? That, you know? So how does, how's that the counter argument though, to the five-year lease? Like why, why can you not have everything both of you said, like hundred percent agree? Cause I know but enough, then at, at the five-year mark, you, it I just, know enough you have couples, to have that conversation. I'll tell you why. I know enough couples who've been married for I, like divorce, pretty rare in my family. A lot of people married a long time. I know a lot of them. If you hit them at the wrong moment yeah. at the wrong time and you approach them, Hey, do you want to continue this? They might not have made if it. If you give them, yeah, if you give them an out. So, okay, so I feel like that's something that, that's also, because 13 years, Katrina and I haven't had perfect, right? Like we've had we've had moments of separation and potentially going our, our separate ways. But what it's always, and I don't know if this has anything to do with us being legally married or not, but what happens in those moments is that you still have to have that that real conversation. Like in the hard moment, in the hard moment when I'm like, I don't like you or maybe we're not meant to be together, but also going like have to evaluate that and go, but you know what? Like you are worth it. Like as hard as it is right now and as much as I'm frustrated right now, as much as I want to go my separate ways, I do love you and there's no one else I want to be with and so I want to make this work. I agree with you, but I don't think a, a like a lease, a contract, well, the reason why I, is the way The reason to do why that. I proposed that a long time ago, why I thought it was an Cuz you're talking about a voluntary conversation. I think that's a healthy relationship. Yeah, but okay, so and why Imagine I think, you give me a letter from the why government. I, why I position <laughs> yeah. that is be, is not for myself personally per se, or even any of you guys, but because I think so many relationships fail to have that conversation. Yeah. That's different. I, it brings I, attention I agree to with that. And so, and so what different. that, what it does is it, it forces all these people who, who aren't actively, I mean, you guys, we're all yeah. like, like to think that we're 
good dads, we're good husbands, we're good fathers, we're all these good things, and we work at it, we all are growth-minded. And so this really, this this idea was less about me personally or any of you in here and more for the general population. I think it would be a healthy exercise that people would be forced to have that conversation every five years. I don't think forcing people through some government lease or or contract or, or hey, here's your letter from the government. Do you guys want to stay married? I don't think that's the way to do it. Well, yet we it's do more, it to get married. It's more of a, well, I also disagree with that. I okay. think it should be a religious ceremony or a personal ceremony. I don't understand why the government's involved in any of it, but I think it's a cultural thing. I think it's one, your family, it's a religious thing. And I do think that there should be, we have, and we're reversing in this way, but there's, there, it's okay to have some societal pressure for people to not so easily divorce. People are like, oh no, we got to make it super easy for people. And I get the whole like terrible abusive relationship type of deal, but there, there should be a healthy amount of pressure that says, hey, you guys got kids together. Like you guys should probably work a little harder at this. And yeah, it's fucking hard. See, that was, and, the they, I, and they need to value that. So, a okay. Bit. So that was the, the argument that, that Doug and I were making. And I, that I said, there's a little bit of that healthy pressure to stay on your toes because it's easier to potentially leave. That's how I felt. I feel like, and I, by the, by the way, I'm completely, yeah, to you guys, but yeah, well, I'm completely speculating. I don't even know if that's, that's like true. neither one of you guys would ever be the dad that would get divorced and then see your kids once a month. That you guys well, would I mean, never Doug's do that. already proof of that. He's not that guy that, right? at all. Right. At and all. So same with me. Like that's, I mean, I, I mean, uh, but there's a lot of guys for out the there audience like to know that like that's when I, when I, back when Katrina, I obviously have had all these conversations. I, I told her the, the nothing shows me or shows commitment more than me having a child with you. Um, the, you could, I said, you could go off and run off on me, steal half of our wealth go get with my best friend and I was still would take care of you and my son. Of course. That's how I feel. Like that's there's how, no bigger commitment. There's that, like you, you're, you're my wife. You're the mother of my, my child. I'm forever attached to you. You're going to be Max's dad forever. Even if you're not married. That's to right. Yeah. So I've, I mean, to me that, that is the ultimate commitment yeah. in, in my eyes. I just so, don't think, and I wish I knew this better as when, you know, when I was younger, but I, I don't think the, type of effort, work, compromise, um, and sacrifice uh, that's required to be with the same person for decades and decades through every challenge you guys are going to go through. I don't think it's really talked about enough of, of that. Like, hey, this is this is what it's going to be like. And sometimes, sometimes for a while, it's going to be really hard. People go through a month of hard and they're like, I'm ready to bounce. Yeah. I'm telling you, man, I've talked to so much. So when I used to train old, like older population, I used to love asking them about stuff like this. And they, I would say like, did you have any tough times with your, oh yeah, so many. To, and then I remember one of them answered this question in this way. And then I asked the rest of them and I couldn't believe it. I said, oh wait, when you say you had a tough time, like, what do you mean? Like, what, like how long was the tough time for? It's like, oh, that was like four years. Like, Holy shit. For four years. You went through a period where you guys were just at each other and just, didn't, it's like, yeah, that was like a four yeah, year period. A but I mean, you're married for 40 <laughs> years or 50 years. <laughs> it's a long time. I mean, you go through stuff like that, you yeah, know? Yeah. So, and I mean, if, if we understood that, we'd know like, okay, it's, you know, people are like, oh, it's equal 50, 50. No, it's not. Sometimes it's 90, 10. And it's going to be like that for a little while until things start to work. Yeah, I mean, but it requires both people. I mean, I mean, I agree. I just, I just think that there's the <sighs> argument to be made on the same, on the opposite side of like that. There's a part of that, that, causes me to work harder because of there's that potential of like, oh, she could literally just bounce tomorrow yeah. and there's no, we don't have to go through legal hoops. Or the nothing. other thing so, too is a lot of people think this, they think that like, first of all, if you have kids and you want to be involved, so that's the criteria here, you have kids, you want to be involved, getting divorced is often harder than being married. <laughs> it takes a lot more planning, a lot more scheduling. You got to put up with more whatever in the being divorced, trying to raise your kids with this person than you did. Yeah. I've never heard anybody in my life say divorce is easy ever. Ever. Well, I think Ever. a lot of people do it thinking this is, I, you know, I'd rather do this and they realize, or they just check out. A lot of guys check out. Which is well, and for, and that, and that's the people why I, I think I presented that information yeah. for. I just think that for those people, I think it's be a healthy exercise for these motherfuckers to have that conversation every once in a while. Mm -hmm. I mean, I naturally have that with my wife all the time, but I think that not enough people 
have that open dialogue and conversation. And I think it's such an important thing. I just thing can't always. imagine it being like a letter from like a government <laughs> agency or. I mean, like it's a bit tongue in cheek, right? Yeah, like yeah, I don't yeah. really think that it should be like that formal, but there's, there's something. That to, alone would irritate so, me. So <laughs> how about positioning it like this? Like, I think it's very important. Okay. And I, I'm going to say less than five. I'm going to say every year to two years that you have a trip or a weekend that you go with your wife or your spouse and it's literally, a, a, let's evaluate where our relationship is. I mean, Katrina and I do that. We just did it this weekend. We do this. We sit. We're alone. No, that's great. And we're and we're like, that's it's, great. we have a check in. How are you, how are you feeling about the relationship right yeah, now? Yeah, that's great. Are you so happy you with me? Get to test drive new vehicles or what? Oh my <laughs> God. <laughs> I'm just listening. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna pitch this. <laughs> that's it. Yeah. Uh, no, I just think doing. I think that is a really important thing that not enough people do is have these blunt straight conversation because that's what happened. They get married and then they just go, oh, okay, we're married. And then to like Doug's point, they just kind of let it all go. They start no, living two separate lives. Yeah. They almost yeah. live two separate, mm -hmm. especially yeah. when kids get involved and oh, then all yeah. of a sudden you're, you're, you're just a dad or just a mom and you don't think about each other yeah. anymore. And it's like, we make sure that we do that, you know, to this day where we regularly check in with each other and say, Hey, are you happy with where we're at? Where we are as a couple, where where you are as a dad. It's interesting because it, it does take a long time. Like my parents, when I was a kid, like they would get in arguments and like big blowout fights and stuff like that. And it's maybe been together forever now, right? Now I see them argue or like they'll bicker and it's so hilarious. It's like my dad will make a comment. My mom will be like, whatever. And then it's over. They're over it. Why they've been together for so long. They've accepted each other, whatever, certain yeah. things. And yeah. it's like no big deal. But I remember as a kid, like that kind of stuff would set them off. So I, I'm like, okay, cool. We'll be there one day. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Get there. There you go. All right, look, if you like the show, head over to mindpumpfree.com and check out all of our free fitness guides. There's a lot of them and they're all free. You can download every single one, costs you nothing. You can also find all of us on social media. Justin is on Instagram, mindpumpjustin. I'm on Instagram, mindpumpdestefano. And Adam is on Instagram, mindpumpadam. 